Every year, the plus model of the Samsung Galaxy S series has been the really awkward middle child. It usually had almost the exact same specs as the base model with a bigger screen, but also a much bigger price tag. So for most people, it was either go with the cheapest base model or just go all the way and get the ultra model. But this year with the Galaxy S24 Plus, Samsung decided to actually make some real upgrades and made the plus model offer a lot more than what it used to. The Plus model now gets more RAM, much bigger battery size, a noticeably better display, and of course, all those new AI features. With these upgrades and considering that the Galaxy S series hasn't changed much over the last two years, the S24 Plus is low key the most interesting Samsung phone right now. And after two months of using this as my main phone, I think it's the one to get this year from Samsung. Before I explain, it would be amazing if you guys could subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Your subs really keep this channel going, so thank you so much. Okay, let's quickly go over the boring stuff. The design is almost the same design from the S23 series, but slightly boxier because of the more squared off edges. Considering the pretty huge size, especially the width, it's surprisingly really lightweight and much easier to handle than the S24 Ultra because it's not stabbing your palms with sharp corners. Still feels really premium thanks to how solid and dense it is, the matte glass back, the brushed aluminum frame, and I'm loving the color options on the base and plus models this year. But yeah, this is getting pretty boring and Samsung making all their phones look the same across all their products doesn't help. I really want a design refresh next year. Also, the Gorilla Glass Victus 2 is supposedly a lot more shatter resistant, but it's definitely more prone to micro scratches, so keep that in mind. I already have a couple of scratches that I noticed recently. But on that glass is the upgraded 6.7 inch LTPO AMOLED display, it's much higher resolution, finally has a variable refresh rate ranging from 1Hz to 120Hz, and can now get a peak brightness of 2600 nits. The auto brightness is really fast and reliable that I almost never have to manually touch the brightness level. So so this display is more power efficient than the previous gen while being higher res and brighter. For watching and viewing entertainment or social media content on a phone, you really can't beat Samsung displays. The in-display ultrasonic fingerprint reader is still as accurate and as fast as ever to the point where I definitely prefer this over a physical reader or face ID. It's got dual serial speakers which sounds just as good as the last two generations of the Galaxy S series. The only difference you'll find is the bottom firing grille is now this single slit instead. The camera hardware on the S24 Plus is basically the same as last year but I was pleasantly surprised and satisfied with the results here, especially with the 3x optical zoom shots using the pretty basic 10 megapixel telephoto. I've been able to get really impressive dynamic shots using either the 2x crop or the 3x optical zoom while maintaining great image quality. A lot of this is due to Samsung's much improved post processing. The shutter speed and the post processing times have improved a ton. Samsung has gone away with over sharpening and over saturating their photos. There's definitely still some pop in there, especially in terms of color vibrance, but the saturation doesn't go overboard anymore. More. Without much grain and without over sharpening the details too much, you get very clean images with clear details. I think this camera does a really good job with portraits simply because it's so good at portraying skin tones, at least here in Asia. This applies for the excellent 12 megapixel selfie camera too. It's really one of the best selfie shooters out there right now for all situations. When put up against the top competitors, I was consistently the most impressed with Samsung selfies. For selfies, portraits, simple wide shots, and landscape photography, this is just the right balance between realism and appeal that for a lot of phones, especially the iPhone is really hit or miss. Now, does it give nice depth and is it as cinematic or as photographic as what Xiaomi and Oppo are producing with their phones right now? No, it's not. And in tough lighting conditions indoors and nighttime outdoors, does it start to struggle and miss? Yes, it definitely does. To balance the tough lighting conditions, the color vibrance disappears and produces dull looking photos. The focus also starts to struggle a little bit, especially with moving objects and subjects. I think this is where you start to see the S24 Plus miss a little. But on the video side, this phone is up there as one of the best video shooters among Android phones with great image quality and stabilization. I do wish the front facing video was a bit more wide angled, but I liked both the rear and the front cameras for vlogging. In daylight, both the front and the back nail the lighting and my skin looks accurate but still flattering, which is the best combo. But for video on the rear camera, I do see the S24 Plus start to get back to Samsung's old ways of sharpening a little more than it needs to. And in low light situations, the video starts to get a little grainy and the stabilization takes a bit of a hit. But like you've seen from my camera comparison videos with this phone versus the iPhone 15 Pro or the Xiaomi 14, these are just minor nitpicks and it still does a really good job in most conditions. So even though the Xiaomi 14 is my absolute favorite camera phone right now, the S24 Plus isn't too far behind. It has a really Really reliable camera system and I have no problems taking this as my only camera anywhere I go. But with this camera we also have all those fun Galaxy AI editing features that come with this phone. With generated photo editing, you can remove or move people or objects from the shot while being able to fill in the empty space using AI. 
It can be hit or miss depending on what the AI is trying to manipulate, but when it gets it right and realistic enough, it can be pretty mind-blowing. Another small but really cool touch in the gallery is that you can slow-mo any video that you have saved. The AI is filling in frames that weren't recorded, which is pretty insane. And unlike the generative photo editing which needs to connect to the cloud, the slow motioning happens on the device itself without needing the internet. What does need the internet is circle to search, which is a pretty simple feature to be honest, but it's also my favorite. You just do a tap and short hold on the nav bar and you can circle any object you want to search up and find and select text to search up or to copy and paste. Sometimes it comes up really handy to find the name and the website of a product that I just saw. I also use this really often to translate websites or images where I can't understand the language. Translation is where Samsung really leaned on this time because other AI features like Call Assist, Chat Assist, and Transcript Assist are all designed to help you communicate with people who are speaking and writing a different language from you. For traveling overseas or moving to a new country, these are really nice to have on hand. But in actual use, I realize that these translation tools are pretty undercooked for now. When using Call Assist, an AI voice will inform the other person that this call is being translated and all that, and there's a bit of a delay in every translation being spoken, so if you or the other person is speaking fast or talking over each other, the AI will start translating pretty weirdly. Since the other person most likely won't be similar with this dynamic, it can be a big jumble of confusion. With how it works right now, I think translated texting or messaging is the better option for now, which brings us to Chat Assist. What Chat Assist is really good at right now is using AI to fix up my writing style or spelling and grammar mistakes. This is even more helpful when typing in a language you're not 100% native in. Chat translation also works well, but it's really limited in the language options available. So for me, I still prefer the combo of Google's Live Translate and Gboard translation features to message or email in another language. To sum it all up, except Circle's Search, which is actually also rolling out to non samsung phones, these Galaxy AI features aren't super essential to me. From a technical POV, they're really cool, but I wouldn't recommend buying this phone for just the AI features. Outside of that, the software experience with One UI 6.1 has been really, really good. One UI is smoother than ever, the design is consistent across the OS, and the animations have improved a ton since the first version of One UI. Nothing OS is still my favorite in terms of aesthetics, but One UI has been looking pretty good too lately. Plus, Samsung has promised seven years of OS and security updates, which is crazy. The only thing I'll mention is that the swipe nav gestures on One UI can get a bit clunky. When I'm trying to swipe back to the previous app, it sometimes gets a little dumb and has no idea what I'm trying to do. Other than that though, it's really hard to stay away from Samsung here in Korea. I talked about this in my recent travel EDC video, but the reason is that it's so, so convenient. I can use Samsung Pay for public transportation in every part of the country. With MST, I can use Samsung Pay to pay for anything, anywhere, as long as the checkout has a card reader. And since a lot of people have Samsung devices, I can use QuickShare to share files and photos super easily. With all those things together, Samsung has been doing a really good job with One UI here, and it's become a necessity for me while living in Korea. But the one area I think One UI or really any other OS is missing is with privacy and security features. There are some basic app protection features here, and I've talked before about the importance of VPNs, but with all these huge platforms and carriers like AT&T getting their data breached all the time, your data is out there in the black market, being traded and sold by data brokers and even worse bad players. I'm personally a victim of this too, especially with my Google account and password manager getting hacked last year. We all need to do more than just your typical antivirus and VPNs to protect ourselves and our info. This is why I really recommend trying a totally free two-week trial with my sponsor Aura to see if and where your data has been leaked and to really secure all your devices. Why Aura is so good is that it's a complete all-in-one protection service and software for your devices, personal data, finances, and everything above. You get antivirus, VPN, and a password manager while also getting identity theft and financial fraud protection. So unlike other platforms which have you paying for each of these services individually, you get everything here with an affordable subscription. Aura will actively monitor and alert you on any new inquiries on your credit and transactions in the worst case that someone is trying to misuse your private info. Aura also gives you white glove fraud resolution, which means there are dedicated case managers available to help you with any fraud issues at any time 24-7. On top of all that, each Aura subscription Description includes a $1 million insurance policy which covers everything from legal fees to other losses as a result of identity theft. So yeah, Aura really makes sure you're protected at all corners. When my Google account got hijacked last year, my personal info spread like wildfire across the black market and it was really scary for me and my family knowing that my passwords, emails, and other personal data were just out there. But with Aura, I was able to find out that 24 data brokers had been trading my sensitive info and with one tap, I was able to quickly request a bulk removal and have a peace of mind. 
Aura is an accredited award-winning company, so you can trust them to watch your back and protect you online. So let Aura do the hard work in keeping you safe online so you can go focus on your daily life. Click the link below, aura.com slash hoyoung, and try the two-week free trial for yourself right now. Okay, now let's move on to performance, which has actually been really good even on this international Exynos version of the S24+. Plus. I went over this in full detail on my Exynos performance review video, but to sum things up, the S24 Plus is fast and smooth in everyday performance. This is largely helped by Samsung stepping up their game in power efficiency, thermal management, and because we finally get 12 gigs of RAM here on the Plus model instead of 8. I'm multitasking all the time here, the camera app opens instantly, and the shutter speed and processing is the fastest I've seen yet from a Samsung phone. It doesn't heat up easily for my day Daily use, I found no issues in terms of Wi-Fi connectivity, network speeds, and the switching between LTE and 5G has been seamless. With One UI being so mature at this point, this phone as a whole has also been one of the most consistent and least buggy phones that I've tried in the past few years, especially when compared to my experiences with Google Pixel and Xiaomi. Now, even if we do push past the everyday to more power intensive things like video editing, short content on CapCut, or playing COD Mobile or Genshin Impact, you still get a nice smooth experience that you'll get on any other flagship phone today. When directly compared side by side with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 phone, you will see some differences. You'll see slightly slower export times on CapCut and maybe slightly lower average frame rates in Genshin Impact. But let's be real, people won't have these two phones side by side to compare. I've been very satisfied with the performance here, and I think 99.5% of users will also feel the same. For battery life, like I briefly mentioned, the power efficiency has been perfectly fine here. The S24 Plus comes with a 4900 mAh battery, right under 5000, which is as big as you can get these days except for a few other phones. In my first two weeks, I admit that it did struggle a bit to get me through a full day, but after I really learned my usage patterns, I'm now getting a full day of battery life no problem on both casual weekdays and busy weekends. Screen on time is really not a great metric since it really varies from person to person, but for me, I'm getting about five to to six hours of pretty heavy use, which is actually great for me. For those of you that were worried about the Exynos version's battery life, there's no need to worry here. The only part that is a bit of a letdown is the charging speed, which can only get up to 45 watts for wired charging. With 45 watt charging, you can go from zero to 100% in just under one hour, and with a standard 25 watt charger, you can go from zero to 100 in about an hour and 20 minutes. Now this isn't slow compared to iPhones, but compared to all the Chinese Android OEMs like Xiaomi, OnePlus, and Realme that are reaching 100 to 120 watts of charging, this is getting to be really slow. So I really hope Samsung steps up their game next year for charging speed because these speeds are starting to feel a bit outdated. Okay, so putting everything together, while Samsung wasn't betting huge on the S24 series besides the Galaxy AI features, they made some really good important upgrades to the Plus model this year. With still a huge display, it's got a more accessible form factor compared to the S24 Ultra. The camera results are surprisingly really good even without any significant hardware upgrades. One UI is as good as ever with a few new useful Galaxy AI features. The performance on even the Exynos model is top notch and the thermals and battery life are not an issue this time around. By no means is it a cheap phone at MSRP, but for an Android phone, no other OEM provides as much on-site and online customer support as Samsung. And with all kinds of trade-in deals and discounts that you typically see from Samsung and partner retailers all year round, I'm sure you'll be able to find a good deal that justifies the slight price differences with competing flagship phones. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know in the comments what you think of the Galaxy S24 Plus and if you agree or disagree with my thoughts here. Thank you so much for watching, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and I'll see you guys on the next one.